This is the next LXL um, D1 topic video. Now, this is getting towards the end of the syllabus, okay? Um, this is called the um, critical path analysis, okay? So, I've put um, a graph on the board behind me. Um, now, it may look kind of similar to some of the graphs we've done already. The first thing that will strike you is obviously this uh, dotted line here. We've not seen one of them before. Uh, that's called a dummy, by the way. Um, and these kind of rectangular block things, okay, that um, almost look like something else, okay? Something we've done previously where we were looking at um, shortest path algorithm, okay? Um, it, but, the, but the top half of each one is not split into two. It's just simply halved, okay? And there's a reason for that. And also, uh, we've got circles here that say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And also, uh, associated with each arc, okay, we've got uh, a, a letter with a number. What the hell does this all mean? Well, it's kind of a whole new approach looking at a graph, okay? So, I'm going to start off by um, labeling, sort of telling you uh, what everything means, okay? And then I'm going to go, hopefully, on and try and explain uh, a bit about this question, okay? So, over here, I wrote this key thing. So, basically, what this is just saying is this. You will always... Get, well, I'm saying you won't get this. This is just kind of to explain what each of these means, rather than just drawing lines to it. Okay, so, in each of these rectangular blocks, there will be a number, okay? And obviously, going to relate to something we'll do in a minute. Now, the top number here, I've labelled A, okay? That is something we call uh, the shortest... Sorry, no, the shortest. Man about the early early event time. Okay, and the B is something we call the late event time. Okay. Now it will become apparent how we calculate them in just a minute. But the next thing I want to do, so hopefully, obviously associates to each one of these, the top half of it is to do with the early event time, the bottom half will be another number, but it will relate to the, something called the late event time. Okay, um, right, these, the um, nodes, okay, which are circle and got numbers in them, they're something we call the events, okay. Because that, there's something called events. Now that's just basically event one is, um, you know, uh, between event zero and one you'll have an activity. Uh, sorry, a minute away. Yeah, you'll have something starting, and this what starts is called the activity. Okay, the letter is the activity. This is activity A, activity E, etc., etc. So in event what is, um, one, activity A takes place. Okay. And this number that is in brackets, that's what we call the duration. Okay, so that obviously, whatever question you might relate that to, it might be to do with time, distance, okay, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so, one more thing for the mention. Okay, yeah, so there's this thing called a dummy. Now, it only really um, comes into play when we start looking a bit more into uh, these graphs. Just make sure I've got uh, yeah, so I'm not going to explain just about this dummy, I shall leave it to a minute. Now, oh, one sec, I've, I've missed something off. Yeah, sorry, this letter, the arrow between 1 and 2 must be, is B, and it's got a duration of 1. Okay, um, these arrows say that um, you must go from 0 to 1, which is obvious, okay? You can't go from 1 to 0, that's what that arrow is showing. Now, on every um, D1 graph, there's not always arrows on it, okay? Some of them have arrows, some of them don't. Okay. And remember going, oh, well, we'd naturally just want to read from left to right anyway. Why is there an arrow going down here? I mean, it's obvious that it'll be going that way. Well, not necessarily. Okay. Um, now, what you might be asked to do, and what this question asks, is work out the earliest event time. Now, the key thing to notice that this last will wherever you want to end up. Now, it might not be as simple graph as this in the exam, okay? It might be complicated, there might be loads of different routes everywhere, okay? But the last event, okay, the last event, which is six in this case, the early event time and the late event time, their numbers will be exactly 
the same. Okay. Now, if um, say for example, the numbers, uh, uh, the two numbers which are associated with four. So event four, the early event time for event four and the late event time for event four, if they are the same and the late event time for five. So basically, if these two numbers are the same and these two numbers are the same, we say um, event four to five has a critical path. Uh, sorry, it's a critical event. In other words, we, we can't stop it happening when it does. And it, it, we can't delay it happening, okay? And that is essentially when we have something called a float. Uh, and Sorry, that's essentially when something called a float is equal to zero. Now, you may go, what the hell is a float, okay? Well, a float, as I said, it's just essentially how long you can de delay an activity. Now, before... There is an equation that goes with this, but the equation that goes with this, as I said, we need to just we need to draw this diagram, uh, fill these numbers in. So, but anyway, you'll, I'll relate it later on. Okay, so a float, you can think of it as um, how long we can delay the activity, delay the start of the activity, delay the start. delay the start of an activity okay now you may be going what the hell um, is does this all mean one second um, yeah so just to give a bit more substance to this early event time and the late event time because I feel I've probably not explained it well enough this early event time um, it simply means the earliest time you can arrive at the event with all the incoming activities completed. Okay, so the early event time for C would well you've got to complete A and B before you get to uh, before you get to event two. Okay, so you've got to complete activity A and activity B before you get to event two. Okay, you can't just jump to event two. So it's the earliest time that can happen from zero to two. Okay, so you have to go activity A and then activity B to get to event two. Event two is just essentially a point once you've completed two activities, okay? But that's not why it's number two, that's just because you, they will always put these numbers in, and by the way, they will always draw the graph, okay? You will never have to redraw the graph in D1, they will always have the graph drawn in the exam. Okay, so as I said, anyway, we're just giving a bit more substance to these early and late event times. The early event time, as I said, is the earliest time you can arrive at the event with all the incoming activities completed. Uh, the late event time is um, the latest time you can leave the event without extending the length of the critical path. Now, the critical path, this is critical, let me play that. Okay, so I said the critical event is where you have um, one activity, okay, this is an activity, where the numbers in the late uh, and early event times for both of the nodes, okay, so basically what I'm saying here is this event D, sorry, this activity D, if the number, because it's nodes, nodes, okay, so the circle things, uh, which are four and five, if they've got the same numbers, now I'm not saying the number here will be the same as the number here, what I'm saying is um, that the numbers in both the early and late event times for four and five, okay, so the early and late event times for five, the top and bottom numbers will be the same, but they may be different to the numbers in four. But what I'm saying is the numbers in four, they are the same, okay? So the early and late event time in four are the same, uh, but they may be different numbers to the early and late event times in five, okay? So hopefully this will make sense. Anyway, so that's a critical um, event, critical activity even, and a critical path is made up of critical activities, okay? So you, it won't be just one node that this happens to. It will happen to a load of a lot of activities which you can follow back, okay, to the start, and that'd be the um, critical path, okay. Hopefully, it makes sense. Now, obviously, to answer, uh, sorry, was there one more thing that I have to mention? Yeah, there's something else as well um, called the slack. And um, similar to the flow, that, like the flow, there is a calculation for this. But to be able to do that calculation, um, I'm going to obviously need a bit of, of numbers in this diagram. But anyway, 
Um, so the float is how long you can delay the start for. However, the slack is it's kind of basically the float is the time before, so how long you can delay the event. Whereas the slack is how long you can have a break. Okay, so during the event or or after it. Okay, so how long you can have a break for? Sorry, can have a break for. Now, as I said, there are um, formulas associated with these, but I just want to put some numbers to this, okay? Now, I'm just debating whether to um, do this question or simply sub the numbers in and kind of explain all of this jargon here. Um, right, should I... Mm. Actually, yeah, I'll, ex I'll explain the dummy actually now. Okay, so hopefully you've got all the information so far. Now this dummy, I'm not going to explain, explain explicitly why it's in this diagram, okay, because I'm going to do another question where it's a little bit more obvious, because in this one, the reason for the, for the dummy, this dotted line, isn't so obvious. But the key thing to know about dummies is they have a weight of zero. In other words, it takes no time to complete the activity. And that's because we simply imagine we've gone from activity four to activity sorry event four to event three, and this is because um, I'll do it in red so it's more related to the graph. Okay, so say if we've got um, two nodes here, say uh, let's just because we're not related to this graph, let's call it nine and ten. Okay, and basically the, you can't can't have this, so you can't have. Two activities, let's call them uh, activity X and Y, both starting at 9 and both ending at 10. Okay, you just can't have that. Um, I don't think there's any mathematical reason apart from the fact you can't do two things at once essentially. Wait, you can, it, it looks like on here you can, but if you think of it like you can't do two at once, so you can't have two activities uh, sharing the same end and start point. So in other words, you can't have one node, uh, you can't have two nodes where they both have an activity starting and ending from them. Okay? Just like that there. Obviously, it might look slightly different in the context of some, a graph that looks like this, but essentially, that's a simplistic view of what, what, what I mean by this. So essentially, this graph is somewhere in there, it's got it. Okay, so obviously you could relate saying one of five of these two nodes that all have the same start and end point. Okay, so hopefully this is a little bit makes sense. Uh, right? But as I said, um, oh, I just the dummy on. But as I said, hopefully, um, you know, I say it's just a bit of jargon at this point. So before we start getting into the thick of the questions. Okay, so I think that's all the bits of information done. Obviously, as I said. I'm going to put formulas to the float and the slack. But for the moment, I just want to go through how we calculate this early event time and the late event time. Now, I think when we were doing um, the, what's it called, shortest path algorithm, okay, we looked, we tried different methods, okay. I think the shortest path algorithm, a couple of questions, it did have arrows as well, so maybe it didn't need to make such a big thing of it. Anyway, we tried different paths and we try to make the number as small as possible, if that makes some kind of sense. In terms of, we try to make the, um, but I'm losing the uh, words out of my mouth at the moment. Like, I think I blame the hay fever for that, to be honest. I what it's called. Um, no, I didn't think we'd get a specific name for it. Yeah, you, you know, I mean, we try to make the number as small as possible. So the number in the top, top right, okay, so that number there, whatever that number was in um, the shortest path algorithm, we try to make that number as small as possible by choosing um, by choosing the route that allowed us to get the smallest number, okay, and obviously in the bottom box we did the working out, crossing out, whichever numbers we did were, were too big, okay, and in that diet, in that algorithm, we basically went from left to right, okay, so Obviously, if you were related to this graph, obviously you wouldn't do it in this case. You go from left uh, to right, okay? And then when you when you got to wherever you wanted to end, in this case, we want to end at six, okay? So when you got to six, 
or whatever it was, okay, would then go backwards and take, because obviously you would have gone so many different routes, you wouldn't be able to just trace it back, okay? Uh, so what, when you've got in a short path algorithm where we got to the right, okay, essentially what we did was we took away the numbers, okay, we took away um, the number in our the box thing, okay, the, uh, I'm going to explain it very well, we took away that number, okay, from the arc, okay, and see if it related to the next, uh, the next box, that made sense, if it doesn't, please do watch that video again, because I'm probably mucking it up, so anyway, the, the idea was, we went from left to right to find the quickest route, okay, and we put, you always put the smallest number in, and then when we went from right to left again, uh, again, when we went from right to left to get back to our original starting point, we just took away the numbers and made sure they were equal to the number in the next uh, little box thing, okay, and then obviously we'd get to the start and we'd have zero as predicted, okay. It's a similar thing to, to this, when we calculate the early and late time, so I mean, when we go from right to left doing calculations, and then it's kind of when we go, sorry, left to right starting with, and then going back through the through the graph. Okay, it's a similar thing, but this time, just because um, maths likes to confuse people, the early event time. Now this is going to sound crazy, and that's probably why you remember it. That's why you remember these videos because I'm crazy. Anyway, you choose the. Basically, the early event time is the number you put in first when you're going from left to right. And it comes from the weighting of these arcs, okay? Because it's the duration it takes, okay? So when you go from left to right, okay? And when you put in the early event time, you choose the biggest number, whichever path you may end up taking, okay? You choose the biggest number that goes in that box, okay? Now, for this example, we've got arrows in. So obviously, we, cut, we can only go a certain number of weights. Which is quite helpful. I think this is kind of the easier, maybe the easier kind of question. Okay, so we choose the biggest number when we go from left to right. Okay, and obviously we'll end up with the biggest number um, in the early event time. Okay, so that hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Now the reason for that is because remember the earliest event time is the event where we need to have all the activities completed. So they're going to have all the activities completed. Surely it's weirdly going to be like having the biggest number because all having all the events completed would mean we need to go through each event, uh, sorry, each activity. So therefore, it's going to almost seem like the biggest number, and it is when you add it on. Hope that makes that's a bit of a. I mean, maybe just remember it because it's weird, but um, that's, that's how I remember it. Anyway, so that's how you calculate the early uh, event time. So. I think, <coughs> sorry, I think I'm going to just end it. Right, okay, so, okay, so, let's go through this, choosing the most, um, choosing the early event time, okay, we'll worry about the late event time in a bit. Okay, well quite clearly when we come from 0 to 1, that's the only route we can take to get to event 1. So therefore that's the largest number, as well as the smallest, but we're choosing it because it's the largest number, 1. Okay, so that's the early event time in B. Okay, now I'm going to go to 2 next. Now there's no other way, okay, because if, 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 we, if we wanted to get to event 2, well we could only go to straight there, because if we went to 3, okay, through E, and then... Well, we couldn't go up to 4 and go back to 2, because this arrow is pointing that way, okay? Pointing that way, so we can't go back up, because we have to follow the arrows. Now, if there wasn't an arrow there, you could argue maybe we could, but we can't, because there's an arrow pointing to 3, okay? So we can't go the opposite way to the arrow, we would probably be shot, okay? Um, so therefore, the greatest uh, number at 2 must be 1 plus 1 plus, that's it, 1 plus 1, it must be 2. Okay, so that's the earliest event time at 2. Okay, so as I said, we can't go to 3 and then go back up to 4. So let's carry on this route, okay, because obviously there's no other point, no other way we can get to 4. Okay, so we do 2 plus 0 0.5, which is obviously going to get us 
2.5 as the earliest event time for C. Okay, because it's the biggest number, not because it's the smallest. Uh, well, it's the only way, but we can pick it, we're picking it because it's the biggest number. Okay, so once we've got there, we can now see potential ways of getting to event 3. So to get to event 3, we could either go from 0 to 1 to 2 to 4 and then back to 3. Or we could go from 0 to 1 to 3. Now, as I said, when you pick the early event time, you have to pick you have to pick the path the path the path with the biggest number associated with it. Okay? So you might want to do like little few numbers at the side of your page or whatever. Okay? So you do one excuse me. I mean you could just go straight to 2.5, but the path you would take is 1 plus 1 plus 0 0.5, which obviously, as we said here, 2.5. And because this has got a weighting of 0, okay, you kind of just jump to 3 without actually having any duration, okay? So you go from 2 to 4, which is 2.5. Uh, sorry, you go from 0, 1, 2, 4, which is 2.5. And then you add 0, 1 and get to 3. Well, that's going to give you 2.5. But don't write that down yet because we have to consider the other path. The other path says we go from 0 to 1, 1 to 3. Well, 0 to 1 is a weighting of 1, okay? And 1 to 3 is a weighting of 2, okay? So, therefore, we go 1 plus 2, which is 3. And that's obviously greater than our value of 2.5. So, we sub 3 into the early event time. Okay. So, now we've got an option to get to 5. Okay? So, to get to 5, we can either do 2.5 plus 0.5 to get to our early event time for uh, event 5. Or we can go from 3 um, to 5, okay? So we do the um, early event time of 3 at event 3 plus 1, okay? So the early event time 3 plus the waiting duration of 1, and that will get us to 4, which is obviously greater than 2.5 plus 0.5. So therefore, the early event time for event 5 is um, 4, okay? And then quite clearly, the only way we can get from 5 to 6 is going from uh, is going from uh, 5 to 6 directly, which is obviously 4 plus 0 0.5, so it's 4.5. Now, as I said, the bottom and top numbers, okay, so the early and late event time for the end point will always be the same, okay? So we've got 4.5 there in the early event time, so the late event time must also be 4.5. Okay, so as I said, the early event time is the earliest time um, we can finish, we can get to, we can, um, get to a point where all uh, incoming activities are completed. Okay, uh, the late event time is the latest time you can leave the event without extending the length of the critical path. Okay, so as I said, we go from left to right to calculate the early event time. Okay, and I might, you might want to put that in. So, okay, so you go from left the graph uh, choosing the uh, path okay which has the biggest value okay so choosing the path with the biggest value now hopefully that makes sense and I've tried to give a bit of a reason to that but you don't really need to be able to understand why that is I think the fact that it is so weird um, might actually help you to remember it okay so because we pick when we go from left to right okay uh, through the early event time we pick the biggest number okay now we have to do the opposite of that for the late event time so when we go from right to left okay we're now choosing the smallest possible number okay all right so is kind of similar to the critical, um, sorry, not the critical, it's kind of similar to the shortest path algorithm, okay, when we go from uh, right to left and we're seeing what numbers fit. But obviously, no number's going to fit, in other words, otherwise we just end up doing this, the same path back. I'm not really interested in that, okay? So, what we have to do instead is we still have to put, because in that example, we already had it, we've already had the number in both boxes, in all the boxes, okay? So we didn't have to fill anything in in that shortest path algorithm. But we still have numbers to fill in in each one of these. So, in other words, you can think of it as, we've got to see what is the late event time for each event, okay? So as I said, we have to go to each um, event 
but we have to pick because we had to pick the um, biggest number for the early event time. Okay, when we went from left to right. When we go from uh, right to left, the late event time, we have to choose um, the smallest. Uh, value, okay. Sorry, I know I said that, but I just wanted to kind of make it clear. Okay, so as I said, we have to visit each node. Okay, so quite clearly for four. So if I'm going to six to five, well, it's going to be um, four four because we're taking four point five uh, from zero point five. Okay. Now what I did there was when we're going backwards, okay, we always do, um, sorry, it's not 4.5, it's 4, it's not 4.5, it's 4, sorry, I don't know what's going on about that. We always take the late um, event time from the number, okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So in that case we took 4.5, so the late event time, away from, um, yeah, we took 0 0.5 away from the late event time of the previous event, okay, so we did 4.5 minus 0 0.5 to get 4, okay, so we do 4 minus 1 to get 3, okay, so we get 3, 3 there, okay, but as I said, you might not want to fill these in just yet, okay, so we have, we're now, we're, we have to also consider the other potential option, okay, so we either go from Four, 5 to 4, okay, so you do 4, take 0 0.5, so the late event time for event 4 is 3.5, okay, so then we have to go back and say, well, would this be quicker, uh, would it be quicker to go back from 6 to 5 to 4 and then to 3, well, not really, because we'd be doing 4, take 0 0.5, take 0 0.5, take 0, rather than doing 4.5, take 0 0.5, take 1. Okay, so you might want to do like 3.5 at the side and cross it out, but it's up to you. Okay, so now we've considered all these on right from 3 and 4. Okay, so we have to consider the numbers uh, on the left hand side. We have to keep going back to the origin, just like we did kind of with the uh, shortest path algorithm. Okay, right, so. We have to take, so to get from 4 to 2, we can't go, so to get from 4 to 2, we can't go, ah, we'll go from um, 4 to 3, 3 to 1, that's acceptable so far. But when we go from 1 to 2, remember, because we're going backwards, you have to, you can't go, it, you can only go in the opposite direction to the arrow, because we're going backwards, okay? So, it's like kind of you reversing time, you couldn't have gone that way originally, so you can't go the opposite way now, if that makes sense, because you're going backwards. Okay, so, as I said, we can't go from 4 to 3 to 1 to 2, okay, because the arrow is pointing to 2, so we can't go back up to 2. Okay, well, that's because we're going backwards, so if we were going up from 1 to 2, we, the arrow would have needed to be pointing this way, okay, but when we're going from left to right on the graph, we have to follow the direction of arrows, okay, so in other words, when we're calculating the early event time, you have to follow the direction of the arrows. But when we're choosing the late event time, because we're going backwards, we're thinking of it in the backwards way, we have to go in the opposite direction to the arrows. Okay, if there are any. If they're not, then it doesn't matter. Okay, but in this case, there are. Okay, so we have to abide by them. Okay, so therefore, to get from four, to get to 2, you have to go from 4 to 2. So we have to take the, the 0.5 away from the 3.5, which obviously ends up with 3. Okay? So now, we're at 2 and we're at 3. Think of it like that. We need to get to 1. Okay, so which is going to be the quickest way there? So at 2, our late event time is 3. Whereas at 3, our late event time is also 3. However, we need to get to um, it in the shortest possible time. Well, 3 take 1, well that's 2. Whereas 3 take 2, well that's 1. Okay, so therefore our late event time at 1 uh, is 1. Okay, and obviously at zero, our late and early event time is going to be zero, zero, because we can't start at eight, any, we can't delay the start, we can't do anything, we have to start at zero, zero. Okay, so taking from this, we can now identify the critical events, or the critical activities. Okay, I'm just going to do it in green. 
Okay, so basically the critical activities are, is any activity um, where these numbers are the same. Okay, so in other words, it's 1, 1, 0, 0, uh, 3, 3, 4, 4, and 4.5, 4.5. Okay, so I'll just kind of colour the root in green. Okay, so that would be the critical um, path, okay, because we've joined up all of the activities where the start and end point is, is what, you know, like 1, 1, uh, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4.5, 4.5. Now, uh, hopefully that all makes sense, that's how you would do it. Now, we need to put some math to these floats and these slack bit, okay. Now, hopefully you get how we calculated the late event time and the early event time, but I'll, I'll recap in a minute, I want to put some numbers with these float businesses. Okay, so the float says how long we can wait, uh, how long we can delay the start, okay? So, basically, you would calculate this by saying, essentially what you'd do, if you were to calculate the float at three, okay, how long you can delay the start, well, you can't, quite clearly, but anyway, what we'd do is we'd take away, we'd do three minus the two minus that, sorry, not minus that, minus that, okay? So what we're doing here for the float, basically, I'll kind of break down what this all means. So what we've got here, right, I'll try and give a really good explanation. This, basically, if, yeah, if we're looking, if we're at event one, okay, this early event time is the same, is the same, no, is a time, uh, essentially where we, it's the um, earliest time of where all the incoming activities have been completed okay so at one we are at this early event time of one okay and what we did to that we said one plus two that's three okay well yes that that is what the case was all right um but however um what we've got here is you can think of it as we've got this is now the latest time we can finish activity in all right um and that's the duration of A. So, therefore, if we take uh, 2 away from 3, take 1, we will get 0. So there's no float at 3. And that's why it's a critical event. Sorry about that. Um, annoying brothers and everything. Anyway, um, I don't really care. Alright, so I'll try and give another explanation on this all circling business. Okay, so this number here, so which is the earliest event, early event time for one okay you can think of that as because that's the earliest time that all the activities up to event one have been completed okay because the next the immediate next thing we're going to do is start activity e therefore the ease the um earliest we can start activity e is the earliest we can finish all the events leading up to event one okay so therefore the, that's the earliest time. We can't start in before we finished all the activities leading up to event one. So therefore, that's the earliest time we can start activity A. Okay. So you can think of it like that. And obviously, this number two here, that's the dura duration of A. Okay. So, and then when we get to when we finished E, we will have, end, uh, have ended up at event three. Okay. And when we ended up at event three. The late event time, which remember is the um, get my words together again. The latest time you can have without extending the length, the critical path. In other words, it's um, yeah. So basically, if we went over that, okay, we wouldn't be able to fit it in the critical path. So what we've got here essentially is that's the earliest time you can. Um, start E because obviously that's the earliest time you can finish all the events leading up to one. Okay, so if you started E at that point, you'd have duration of two, and the um, latest, yeah, the earliest time you could finish all of them in coming together is three. Okay, but um, we look at this late event time. This late event time here is basically um, the latest time that E can finish, but because that's the same as the earliest time, the earliest time E can finish is 3, okay, and the latest time E can finish is also 3, okay, because obviously we've got only one path here to get to E, um, well actually no, we've not got one, yeah, yeah, we've, we've only got one there, sorry, 
Leave it like that, okay? So, therefore, because as soon as we start, as the earliest we can start E, when we start it at that point, what, that duration takes up all of the time. Basically, the latest time we can finish E is 3, okay? And the earliest time we can start it is 2. And because that is the same as, the difference between them is the same as the duration, okay? We essentially can't have, um, we can't delay the start, okay? Because if we delayed the start, then we'd run over 3, okay? Even if we had 0 0.5 of a break, we'd still run over 3, okay? So therefore, this float is essentially, the float calculates, okay? So I've tried to build it up for you, is basically it's these three numbers taken away from each other. So it's the 3 minus the 2 minus the 1. And obviously, that always equals 0 for a critical um event, that activity. Okay, and what we've done there is essentially we've done um, the latest start, uh, the latest uh, late event time minus the duration, okay, minus um, the early event time. Okay, now if you just looked at that, that I think that is a cal uh, uh, an equation you've given. Now, if you just looked at that, you think, ah, well, it's 3 minus 2 minus 3, okay? Because the early event time seems to be 3, and the late event time also seems to be 3, but we're also taking 2 away from that. And that gets us minus, minus 1. I'm oh, sorry, not minus 1. Gets us 1, sorry. I'm going to go for this. That will get us 1. And we know, um, and we know that uh, there can't be a flow on the critical uh, path, okay? So, obviously, that calculation would be wrong. Now, you could say, why are we taking it away from the one on the bottom, but it's clear to make this distinction. Um, but you don't necessarily need to be able to realise it is the early event time uh, from this one. Okay? So hopefully that makes a bit of sense, but as I said, it, it doesn't have to really. So that's what the float is. The slack is how long we can have a break. So essentially, it's how long we can have a break after. All right? So after we've completed the activity, the earliest time, basically, it's the latest time we can finish that activity, uh, taken away, so we do the difference between the latest time we can finish it and the earliest time we can finish it. Okay, now event E, sorry, activity E must finish by 3. Okay, the latest event time that we've circled there is 3, but the earliest time we can finish it is also 3. So therefore, we can't have, we can't be slacky. Okay, we can't have a break. Okay, so what calculation I did there was now. When we were calculating the float, the latest and the late event time and the early event time were from the two different nodes that the activity was connected to. But the slack, when we when we do this calculation, okay, so the calculation for the slack is the late event time minus the early event time. And the key thing to distinguish here is that both of them event times are from the same um or should we call this, we'll call this the same um, node, okay? So this is from the same node, okay? Because that says the earliest uh, and latest start event time. Now, because I said um, that this number one here, so the late event time, so the early event time for one, so the earliest time you can finish all the incoming activities to one is the um, earliest time you can start E. If we apply that to F, which is connected to the node where E ends, okay, the early event time um, at event 3 is the earliest time we can therefore start F. Okay, you could apply this logic, so therefore the latest time um, that we can finish um, F, okay, is 4. But the earliest time we can also finish F is 4. And because well, from where F finishes at node 5, the next activity we do is G, okay, the, and we're going to do G immediately after we finish activity F, Therefore, the, because we're not going to have a, decide to not have a break in between, we're just going to go straight into activity G. Okay? And because we've, the earliest time we can finish activity F is 4, okay? Therefore, the earliest point we can start G is at 4. Okay? Maybe that's 4 hours. I don't know. It's whatever these would represent. Okay? So, hopefully, that's all the crude information you need to be aware of.
Okay, critical path analysis. Now, um, uh, by the way, um, the calculating the early event time is called the forward path because you're moving through the diagram, and calculating a late event time is because you're moving back through the diagram. It's called a backward pass. But so you don't really need to be aware of that. They just might refer to it. Um, calculating the uh, early event time as a forward pass, and they, they might say calculating the late event time is also known as the um, backward pass. Okay, so as I said, I haven't really gone into much detail about these events. Now, I don't really need to know that, they might be um, shown it as that. Now, there's one more thing I just want to highlight before we move on. What Basically, we've got this event one here, and there seems to be two activities coming out of it at once. Now, when you, unless you're a woman, you can't do both at the same time. Okay, um, but what we're saying here is activity B depends on activity A, and activity E that also depends on activity A. Basically, what we're saying here is if you've if you've got a node, okay, if you've got one node, okay, it's number one. The activities, the activities that leaving that node depends on the activity that is entering that node. Okay, so you can apply that to any situation here. So, activity G depends on activity D and activity F because both of them activities are entering the node from which G, the activity G, leaves. Okay, now we're going to put this in a bit of perspective a bit later on. Okay, when we come to look at something called Gantt chart. And a Gantt chart is essentially where we take all this information and we put it, because these might be activities, say, building a house, where you build the walls and stuff. You have to obviously build the walls before you build the roof, etc., etc. Okay, so obviously I've not put it into a context just yet, uh, but later on we, we do when we put it in a, a Gantt chart we have to do something called scheduling. But next, I'm just, what I'm going to do is rub all this information off the board and probably change my shirt as well, change the lighting, uh, and, and fast forward about seven hours. Or whatever it is, uh, time is anymore. Okay, and what I'm going to do is just put a different question on the board, and using all this information, okay, you can have a go at that question and um, just see what answer you get for it. Okay, and then I'll go through it. But hopefully, that information there has been probably quite helpful. But as I said, if if it's not D1 is kind of, I mean to be honest, I think D1 is slightly, especially this kind of end of it. It is weird and difficult, okay, but once you get your head around it, it's easier that you just do questions like that, okay, so as I said, they're all similar questions anyway, okay, so, alright, um, I'll just get ahead and move all that off. Hello, welcome back, um, okay, so what I've done here is I've done another um, example again, change my shirt as I said, okay, um, anyway, I've just put some questions on the board here. Now, before I say ah, have a go at it, just to make sure, I mean, just to make sure you do understand this, I'm just going through a few things uh, about this diagram before you have a go at it. You probably don't already, but anyway. The okay, so the questions are, um, A is asking you to find the earliest, uh, sorry, the early and late event times. I've done, done that properly. Okay, which essentially just means filling in the boxes. Um, and then B is find and state the critical path. Okay. Uh, so if you don't get that, essentially what it is, this critical path is where there's no flow, okay, so you can't delay the start of the activity. In other words, these numbers here will be the same numbers as these numbers here if F is to be a critical event, okay. And the critical path is made of critical events. A part C, now, I don't expect you to get part C at all because there's a formula that I need to explain to go with part C. Um, but part C says, state the minimum number of workers for, uh, I've not written this on, but state the minimum number of workers for um, the activity to be completed in the, um, with the smallest amount of workers. Okay, so it doesn't have to, for that, it doesn't have to finish when we say it does. Okay, so we'll get a number, obviously, as I said, the top and bottom of each of these kind of rectangles will have a number in it. Okay, and number six, the, the event six, okay. We'll, we'll have uh, numbers associated with that's the earliest and late early and late event time, okay? But because if we look at it from the perspective, we've got to have the smallest number of workers, obviously it's going to take a bit longer, okay? So, as I said, there's a formula that goes with that, so I wouldn't attempt C, although you could be thinking about it as you're doing it, okay? Because obviously these are uh, 
activities. Okay, so basically, hopefully you can see the direction of the arrows, but basically they're all going from left to right, apart from the one that's going down from 1 to 2 and 2 to 3, they're going down, so obviously you can't go up when you're uh, calculating the early event time going from left to right, okay, and then this dotted line, remember, is a dummy, okay, so it's got a weighting of 0, and then you go from just 2 to 4, right, um, and then one, the 4 to 5 that's going down, so if you can't go up from 5 to 4 when you're calculating the early event time. But remember, you can only go in the opposite direction of the arrows uh, to when you are going from right to left and calculating the late event times. And just a bit of a recap before I set you off. The early event time is using the path with the greatest number, okay, the greatest weighting, total weighting, and the late event times, you have to calculate it at each um, event, okay, so you have to calculate each node, if you think of it like that, um, but this time you have to calculate the smallest root to each node, or, or the smallest, the root with the least weight, total weighting, okay, total weighting being the weighting of one arc, uh, arc into the weighting of one arc, the other arc, etc, okay, so, I mean, you might want to just have a go at B and, uh, A and B, as I said, part C, I'm going to become, a, I'll, I'll do this, I'll leave you to it, and then I'll, when we're going through it, and I've done A, B, um, we'll put with the formula to help us find C, okay? And then when we've done that, we're going to go on, and we've completed this graph, I'm going to relate it to something we call a Gantt chart. But for the moment, if you just want to have a go at that, um, and then, obviously, I'll go through it in a second, okay? Just pause the video and let you have a go at it. Okay, so, hopefully you've um, had a go at that, we can get back on uh, with answering it, okay? So, the first part, part A, should have been relatively simple if you get the concept of early and late times, okay? So, early, well, we can, we go from left to right looking at the path with the uh, biggest weighting. And remember, that was kind of a, a weird thing because you think of it, well, early should be the smallest. Well, it's not. Uh, you just think it's math, so it's going to try and confuse you, so it's going to be the biggest. Um, okay, but essentially that's just because we've got to go through everything, so it's going to be the larger value that makes sense. Anyway, um... So we go from left to right, but again, this uh, particular graph has arrows on it, which we have to abide by. Now, if it didn't, um, obviously we could go, say, if we wanted to get to 3, we could go from um, 0 to 2 to 5 to 3, but obviously that'd be a waste of time, because we'd probably end up going back to 5, alright? Um, okay, so anyway, let's... Um, Obviously, the first one we're going to start with first is uh, going from 0 to 1, okay? So if we go from 0 to 1, um, well, that's just 7. Now, you go, ah, well, well, hang on a minute, so we'll write 7 first, that might go in this early event time. Is there any other potential ways of getting to 1? Well, you think, ah, we could go from 0 to 2 and 2 to 1. Well, 0 to 2 is fine, because the arrow goes that way. But we can't go from 2 to 1 because the arrow is pointing down from 1 to 2. So we can't go the opposite way to the arrow. We can only ever do that when we're calculating the late event time. But because we're calculating the early event time, we have to abide by the arrows, okay? It would be shot at, at the uh, crack of dawn, okay? Probably hung as well. Okay, we go, ah, well, what about going from 0 to 2? 2 to 4, and then 4 to 1. Well, 0 to 2, and even 2 to 4 is completely acceptable, okay? But as soon as we start going from 4 to 1, well, the arrow is going from 1 to 4, so we can't go in the opposite way to the arrow. Because, as I said, we, we have to follow the um, direction of the arrow when we are calculating the early event time, okay? So now, the only po possible route we can take to get from... Uh, to get to 1, it's going from straight from 0 to 1. So therefore, the early event time must be 7. And we choose that, not because it's the only value, well, that's the reason we choose it, but you think of it, we're choosing it because it's the uh, biggest value. Okay? Now, let's look at going from... Uh, let's go at going to 3. Okay? Well, what I'm going to do, actually, is just... Before we look... Oh, right, okay, you know, I'll do this. Okay, so we can quite clearly, one of the routes we can go is just from straight from 0 to 3, okay, which has got a uh, weighting of 33. The other potential route we can take, okay, is going from 0 to 2, and then 2 to 3, 
Okay, so therefore we'll be doing, um, we'll be 23, so duration of activity G, and the activity, uh, duration of activity L is 14, so we're 23 uh, plus 14 is 37, okay, and as I said, for the early event time, we want the greater uh, time, so we cross out 33, and we're at 37 in the early event time, okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, okay, so now we've done. Um, oh, wait, sorry, I've missed a thing of two hundred. Sorry, I do apologize. I thought I'd put every box in there. I've missed a box off for two. Some of you may have spotted that. So if you did, well done. I do apologize um, for those of you that actually attempted this question. But as I said, I, you know, I, I'm not expecting everyone to have attempted that, so I'm not going to apologize too much. Okay, so that's kind of screwed it up a little bit, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, because there's no other way of getting to two. Oh, actually, yeah, there is. Okay, so... Does it make sense? Obviously, sorry, no, 37, one sec. Let me double check. Yeah, I didn't think it was. Okay. All right, well that screwed that up. I do apologise, I'm not 100%. So, sorry, the answers could be 33 um, or 37, okay? But there is another read to get to three. Oh, God. Sorry, I do apologise, it's hay fever season. Okay, so we've, we've done getting to one and that's the only possible way of getting to one. Now to get to two, we could either go straight from zero to two or we could go from zero to one to two, okay? Going straight from 0 to 2, we get an answer of 23. Okay, so you're at potential 23 in the early event time, but you don't actually write it in there just yet. The other way of getting to um, 2 is going from a 0 to 1 and then 1 to 2. And we can do that because the arrow goes from 1 to 2. So we're following all the directions of the arrows. In other words, we'll be adding the 7, the weighting of 7 from uh, the activity A, and the weighting of 17 from activity D. Okay. So 7 plus 17 is um, 24. Make sure that's right. Yeah. Okay, so the activity is 24. So therefore, 24 goes in the early event time for 2. Okay, so to get to 3, what we can either do, there's a couple of routes, and obviously I didn't see it straight away. We can either go from, uh, straight from 0 to 3, which is 33. We can either go from, at 0 to 2 to 3, but we know to get to 2, a longer route is going from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, and then um, obviously that gets us a large value of 24. Okay, so we're not going to have this, have this 37 in there because, well it's not going to be 37 because it's the longer route to get to 2 is 24, not 23. Okay, so what we're going to do to get to 3, okay, this perfectly works fine. You go from 0 to 1, okay, you get to get your weighting of 7, and then you go 1 to 2 to get a total weighting now 24, and then you can go from 2 to 3, which you add uh, a weighting of 14, okay, to 24, which is obviously going to get you uh, 38. So I do apologise, I mean, I probably attempted this question, as long as you get the principle right behind it, because I didn't draw in that little box thing, but I mean, you probably might, you probably should have spotted that anyway, to be honest. But in the exam, it will be drawn properly. Obviously, uh, you can see why I don't write for uh, the exam board, partially because I'm a student, but anyway. Okay, so we have done all the possible routes to one, two, and three. Okay, so we've got to keep going right on the graph. Okay, so the next two activities we've got to get to is four and five. Okay, so let's just have a look at the potential routes. Uh, so I'm going to start with activity four. Okay, so the potential ways of getting to activity four, now this is from any of the previous nodes, okay? So if we wanted to get straight to four, it looks like going from one to four is going to be the easiest way. Okay, because we simply uh, have got a weighting of 11. When we finish, uh, when we get to event one, okay, we've got active, we can go straight through activity B, 
okay, which has a weighting of 11 to get to event 4. So what we're doing now is 7 plus 11, which is obviously 18. Now I'm not going to write that in the box because quite clearly that doesn't look like it's going to be the biggest value. Okay, so another potential way is if we're at, so that's the only way really, um, if you were looking at it from node 1. Um, but saying that though, you could, if we look at node t event 2, okay, now we know that 24 in the early event times coming going from 0 to 1 and then 1 to 2, okay, but we just think of it as we're at node 2 already, okay, so we go from 1 to 2 and then we're at 24 is the early event time, but this dummy, remember, um, has now got a weighting of 0, okay, and that's because, um, yeah, so we can just do 24 plus 0 to get the early event time for 4, which is also uh, 24. Okay, because we're imagining an activity that isn't really there. And you have to remember we input dummies because two events can't have the same start and end time. Now if you were asked why that dummy was there, uh, if you were asked why the dummy, because this is a potential question, uh, you could get asked in the exam, you, say, you might say, why is the dummy um, of activity E there? And you go, well, you have to look, well, where are these two, so, where are two, because they've got to be having the same start and end point, okay? Or they've got to depend on both, uh, 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 two of the same things, okay? And there's a couple of things you could say, you could say, well, technically, because one goes activity one goes to activity sorry event one goes to event two you could say therefore d and um h depend sorry d and e would yeah d and h would depend on uh, two uh, oh, excuse me so therefore we have to invent this dummy um so that we don't have two events um starting and then the same no, sharing the start same start and end point okay maybe that's not the best explanation of why it's there but you get the idea the principle behind it anyway that's not the question Okay, so we've looked at going directly from 1 to 4, okay, and that got us a value total combined early event time of um, 18, and then we looked at going from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, and then straight over the dummy from 2 to 4, and that got us uh, an event of uh, early event time of 24. Now, it's not likely to be too many more, um, but we could go from 2 to 5, and then 5 to 4. That looks like a possible solution. And 2 to 5, well that's completely acceptable, we're following the path, okay, so it'll be 24 plus 15, but then when we try and go from 5 to 4, we'd be going in the opposite direction of the arrow. And we know we can't do that because we're not doing a backward pass, in other words, we're not going back through from right to left. Okay, so we can't do that method. So therefore, you could say, ah, well, you could say this is the same as going from, if you were at node uh, event 3, okay, we could go from 3 to 5, node 5 to 4. But again, we couldn't go from 5 to 4 because there's an arrow pointing uh, that way. And you can't go from 3 to 2 and then uh, 2 to 5 and then two, uh, 5 to 4 because the arrow going from 2 to 3 is going down, okay, so we can't go back up it. So you have to consider all the possible routes to each node. Okay, so therefore, as the, the only way we can go, uh, because the arrow has lets us, is going from 1 to 4, or from going to uh, 1 to 2, and then 2 to f and then two to 4, okay, which is 24. Okay, so you obviously cross out the 18 and put in the 24. Now, it's, a cr it's really crucial um, that you show your working out, in, especially in D1. Now, when, because... Um, People, many people will do slightly different methods, okay, in terms of um, you work it out. The examiner is only going to be really looking at these little numbers in the boxes, okay, uh, and they will match up with what they've got. Uh, well, obviously, now they wouldn't have done the question. Watch is up with the mark scheme, and obviously, if you get the right answer, weirdly enough, they'll give you the marks. But um, they need to also see that you've thought about these pot other potential routes, so you have a number and you've crossed it out, okay. Alright, so that's the early event time for 4, and remember we picked 24 because it was the biggest number. Okay, so let's look at the potential ways of getting to 5. Okay, so the potential ways of getting to 5. We could go from 1 to 4, 
and then 4 to 5. But we already know to get to event 4, the, the early event time is going from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, and 2 to 4, which will get us an early event time of 24. So there's no point looking at other ways to go through event 4, okay? Because we've already considered to get to event 4, the greatest time, the early event time, is... 24. So there's no point trying to fathom other ways to get from the start to 4 and then back to 5 and then to 5, okay? Because we've already considered all the possible ways of getting to event 4, okay? So we assume that uh, if we we could go from 4 to 5, okay? Because the arrow follows it and there's no point trying to fathom other ways to get to 4 so we can get to 5, okay? So in other words, We've considered all the ways that we can get through to four, okay? So that number 24 is, all things considered, the greatest um, weighting, total weighting we can have to get to four. Okay, so it's 24 plus 26, okay, which is obviously um, 50. Sorry, oh, mine's gone there. Okay, so our greatest value so far is 50. Now we can go from straight from two to five. We said that was acceptable, okay? Um, and what you'd be doing is 24 plus 15, okay? And quite clearly, 24 plus 15 is not bigger than 50, as it is in 39. Okay, we still write it in as a possible solution, okay? And you could go, ah, well you could go from two to three, but we've already, cons you could go from zero to one, 2 to 3 or 0 to 3 but remember we've already considered all the possible values of getting to 3 so these numbers we've wrote in okay there's no point trying to fathom um well what's the largest route we can get to 1 okay so we can make it the largest route to get to 5 because remember all the numbers we've wrote in for the early event times um for each event they're the biggest they can be okay so what we have to do is we have to consider possible routes from the events furthest to the right okay so hopefully that makes sense. So there's no point going all the way back from the start again to work out the biggest early event time for five. We just look at the closest um, nodes or events that we already have filled in. Okay. So as I said, we've considered going from four to five, two to five. The only other possible route we can take is going from three to five. Okay. So that'd be 38 plus four, which is bigger than 39, but it's definitely not bigger than 50, as it is 42. Okay. So you cross out. 39.42 and write 50 in the early event time. Okay, so as I said, now we've considered all the possible um, routes, okay, to 4 and 5, and obviously we've all con therefore also all considered the uh, greatest possible routes to get from uh, 0 to 1, zero, uh, uh, to get from, to get 1, 2 and 3. Sorry, hay fever, I do apologise. I'm not on any kind of drug, I'm just um, a bit dead, so I do apologise. Okay, um, anyway, so as I said, we've considered all the greatest, uh, sorry, the early event times apart from event six. Now, the closest two, okay, the only ways, the only other ways we can get to uh, six, okay, we could go directly from four, okay, so we could go from four to six through activity C, or we could, now, you could say, ah, well, we could go from event four to, to event five, but remember, we've already considered We've already considered that, and that's led us to the greatest value um, of the early event time for 5, okay? So there's no point saying, ah, oh, we could go from 4 to 5 and 5 to 6. We well, could think like that, but we've already considered that option, okay, in the um, event, uh, early event 5, uh, okay? So basically, the only two routes we can take are from 4 to 6 or 5 to 6, okay? So it's either, which is the greatest value? 24 plus uh, the 31, okay? As I said, you would write this in a little next to the side, but I've kind of not left myself enough room. Oh, God. Hey, fever, it's horrible. Okay, so anyway, 24 um, plus 31 is 55. Sorry, I do apologise. Oh, God. I freaking hate this hay fever. Oh, God. Alright, so it's 50 plus the weighting of 5 to 6, which is going through activity G, uh, which is 7. So it's obviously 57. So 57 is the greatest weighting. Okay, so you cross out 55. And 57 is the early event time. Now, remember one thing I said about this. Uh, the, last the last event that you end up at, in this case, 
they wanted to have, end, uh, have ended up at event 6, which is what's happened, obviously. But what I say, said about the last um, event, okay, on Node, is that the early late event times will be exactly the same. Okay, so basically top and bottom of this little rectangle thing at event 6 will uh, be 57 and 57. Okay, so you can take off the fact now we've calculated this early, uh, sorry, all the early event times. Now we need to choose all the late event times. And remember, because we're going back through the diagram from right to left, we have to consider, um, we have to choose the value of the smallest um we have to choose the value, um, uh, the path which has the smallest or lowest weighting attached to it for to get to each possible event, okay? And obviously, because we're going back through the diagram, we can only go in the opposite direction to the arrows. We can't follow the arrows anymore because that was what we did from going from left to right, finding the early event time, okay? So these numbers, we don't, the early event times we don't have to consider anymore okay we just simply do the late event times okay so we do 50 to get to the four we can do 57 minus 31 okay so you don't write that in just yet okay so you do 37 uh, 57 sorry minus um 31 right, i really don't trust myself anymore and that gets us 26 okay Actually, no, don't write that in just yet because it might not be the right answer. Okay, so that's that's one possible route. Okay, and then when we do this calculation, we do the bottom number, the late event time, minus the duration to get the late event time of the next node. Okay? Alright, so you could go from 6 to 4 directly, or you could go from 6 to 5. Okay, now that's obviously the only way um, you could get to. Uh, 5 because we couldn't go from 6 to 4 and then 4 to 5 because remember this arrow from 4 to 5 is in the, is in the direction we want to go okay and when we're calculating the late event time it has to be in the opposite direction um, to the way we want to go okay so therefore to get to 5 the late event time must be 57 minus 7 which gets us 50 so therefore the late and early event time at 5 is 50 and 50 and that pays dividends because um, of some uh, that means obviously because J the numbers here in the early event times at 5 and 6 are the same okay not the same to each other but the early and late event time for each one is the same okay so therefore J must be a uh, critical event okay it means we can't delay the start of the event but so we'll go to that in a minute anyway so we can go from 5 to 4 because it's in the opposite direction to the arrow, okay? So therefore we could say 50 uh, minus 26, okay, it's another way to get to 4, okay? And 50 minus 26 is 24, so therefore we can cross out the 26 at 4, okay? We can write in that 4 is 24 and 24, okay? So continue this method now, um, right? So we have to look uh, at... so. I'm just going to do the uh, next one, okay, look at, well, what is it to event um, 1, okay, so, as I said, we've considered, there's no point looking at other ways to get to 4 and 5, because we've considered all of this to the right of 4 and 5 now, we need to consider what's to the left of it, okay, so, we're going from these late event times numbers on the bottom, okay, you have to, have to remember that, okay, so, going from 4 to 1, okay, we could go 24 minus 11, as I said, I would write this at the side, uh, the side of it, okay? So 24 minus 11 is obviously 13, okay? But I wouldn't write that in just yet. I'd just write it at the side like that, um, okay? So you can see that we've considered it, but we've not necessarily it said it's the late event time because it not necessarily is the smallest value, okay? So the other way of getting from 4 to 1, we could go from uh, 4 to 2, okay? And then 2 to 1. But remember... That's the same as saying ah, we could go from 5 to 2 and then 2 to 1. Okay? So there are other ways of getting there. Okay, so to get to event 1, we need to calculate the late event time for event 2. That's what I was trying to get at there. Okay, so to late event time to get to event 2, we could either go um, from 4 to 2 or 5 to 2. Okay, there's no point calculating getting from 4 to 5 and then 5 to 2 because we've already considered 
Uh, well, we can't do that anyway because the arrow is pointing down from 4 to 5. But we've already considered the late event time for 5. So there's no point trying to figure how we can get to 5 again. Okay, so as I said, we need to consider the late event time for 2 to enable us to consider the late event time for 1. Because one of the ways that we want to get to 1 is going through 2. Okay, so we need to know the late event time for event 2. Okay, so as I said, we can either go directly from 4 to 2 because the arrow is pointing from 2 to 4, so we can go in the opposite direction of it, which makes sense, okay, or we can either go from 5 to 2, okay, so the two possible ways are going 24 minus 0, okay, which is obviously 24, or uh, 50 minus 15, which is obviously greater than 20, um, okay, and it's 35, okay, so obviously 20 is looking at the more realistic solution at the moment and there's no other ways of getting to 2 because we can't go from 5 to 3 and then 3 to 2 well we can go from 5 to 3 but we can't go from 3 to 2 oh, yeah oh sorry, we can, what are we going on about we can go from 5 to 3 and then 3 to 2 okay, so to do that Am I digging myself a big hole here? I think I am. Yeah, I probably should have calculated event 3 first. Yeah, okay, so hopefully you see why I'm messing myself up here. Okay, so to calculate the... Originally we wanted to calculate the late event time of event 1, but we can't do that because we need to know what's the late event time of event 2. And to calculate that, we need to also consider what the late event time of event 3 is. Because the reason I'm doing this is because there's many different ways of getting to 1 and 2, okay? And to do that, we can also go through 3, and probably should have started with calculating 3, but, I mean, you should just accumulate these uh, skills of checking all the possible different routes. Now, I do acknowledge in the exam, you might miss one or two, um, okay? But, you know, th that will cost you your life. Anyway, so the late event time, the only way you can get to event 3, okay, is from 5 to 3. We can't go from 5 to 2 and 2 to 5, because from going from 2 to 5, we're going in the direction of the arrow, okay? So we need to go from 5 to 3, which is 50 minus 4, which is obviously um, the 46, okay? So now we've calculated the late event time for event 3, we can see the possible ways of getting to event 2. Now, as I said, to get to event 2, okay, we can either go directly from 4 to 2, or 5 to 2, or 5 to 3, and then 3 to 2, okay? Because we have to go in the opposite direction to the arrows, okay? So as I said, we've already considered going from 4 to 2 and 5 to 2. So the other way is going from 5 to 3 and then 3 to 2. Well, we're already at the late event time of 46, okay? So we do 46 minus the duration, 14, okay? So 46 minus 14 is 32, okay? So therefore, quite clearly, the earliest event, late event time, the late event time is 20, okay? So it's 24, 20. Okay. I'm sorry, I do apologise, I might have messed it up. Sorry, I think I've made a, an error somewhere, sorry. Sorry, one second, I just need to make sure I've not made it catastrophic error. Okay, so, um, I don't know what I was going on about 2420. So, the actual late event time is 20, as you can tell, my hay fever's improved. Um, anyway, okay, so, it's 2424. So, we could either um, go directly to zero from two. However, the key thing is here, We've already got an early and a late event time for zero, which is zero, zero. Now, obviously, um, when you go back, eventually, we'll have to equal zero. And quite clearly, when you take away the uh, zero from the late event time of 24 at event two, you end up with, well, enough, 24. Uh, sorry, oh, I've got to one more stupid thing. Okay, so quite clearly, that is mathematically proven. Either we've done something wrong in our calculation, or more likely, that's not the quickest route. Um, to zero. Uh, yeah, the late event time. So what we do is we go 
Because you remember, we can only go in the opposite direction to the arrows because we're going from right to left, calculating um, the late event time. So we can't go from 2 to 3, 3 to 0, because if we went from 2 to 3, we would be following the direction of the arrow, and quite clearly we can't do that. But when we go from 2 to 1, we're going in the opposite direction to the arrow, so therefore that is allowed. Okay, so we can go from 2 to 1. Now, 24 minus 17 is 7, so we've got 7, 7 in our event, uh, early and late event time for event 1. And then we just go back to 0 and we take 7 away from 7, okay, and we end up with 0, 0 as predicted. Okay, so we can take off all the parts to part A. Okay, so this next bit says find and state, uh, state the critical path. Now remember, the critical path is where there is no flow. In other words, we can't delay the start of the activity. In other words, the end time, the late, um, the late event time, which is the... Okay, so it asks you to state, uh, find and state the critical path. Now, as I said, the critical path is when there is no float, so we can't delay um, the start of the activity. So the late event time, which is the end of the activity, essentially, which is this, the second number, okay, minus the duration must equal, uh, sorry, the early event time of um, the activity. Okay, so remember, um, I kind of gave a bit of an insight to it before when I was saying, um, yeah, so that's the early, so the early event time of, uh, say, zero here, the early event time of zero is the earliest time we can start the next activity, one of, uh, such as activity A. Okay, and then when we look at the late event time, okay, is the Latest time we can, uh, you know, complete the activity with all the incoming activities completed, okay, which is seven, okay, and as the duration is seven, in other words, the duration is the distance between the earliest time we can start it and the latest time we can finish it, therefore we can't have a break. So therefore, there is um, no, yeah, so basically, when we've got two numbers here that are the same, two numbers here that are the same, we have uh, the critical event, okay, so I'm just going to cover them all in blue, I think. Okay, so A is a critical path, okay, and then they will eventually all gang up, so, okay, so activity B has got numbers the same there, and so has activity 6, okay. Would activity, um, okay, so you could go from 0 to 1, and then 1 to 4, and then 4 to 6, or you could go from one to 0 to 1, 1 to 2, at 2 to 5, and then 5 to 6. Okay, and you could also say, oh, we could also go to F. Okay. So, whichever path you want to take, okay, so look, the potential critical paths are 0, 1, 2, uh, 0, 1, 4, 6, in other words, A. So you would write it something like this. So for 1A, for A, you would write A, B, um, and C, okay. So you go A, B, C, or you could do um, A to D to uh, H, okay, so this is this one here, to J, or you could do uh, 0 to 1, 1 to 4, 4 to 5, and 5 to 6, okay, which would obviously be A to B to F to J, okay, so they're potential critical paths, so any one of them would have done, now personally I would have picked the easiest one that looks like it, it's going to be able to do is A to B and then B to C rather than trying to go up and down, left and right and all that kind of nonsense. But as I said, either any one of them three would be um, acceptable. Okay, so that would be finding and stating the critical path. Done. This one, part C. State the minimum number of workers um, for this activity to be completed in time. Now as I said, I did expect you to be able to answer this. Because there's a formula that I need to go through with you. And the formula is called the lower bound. And I think we looked at something similar um, towards the start of D1 when we were looking at the bin packing algorithms. I know that's bin packing, uh, and this is kind of um, a bit more challenging. But anyway, um, the formula is... Let me certainly uh, get it up. There it is. Sorry, do apologise. It's the total of the activity duration, so total of all activity durations, 
Okay, so that's every single duration in the entire graph. So total um, of all activity duration. Total of all activity duration, put D in brackets, over the duration or the length of the critical path. And that says um, the minimum number of workers needed to complete the activity. Now, obviously, if we use the minimum number of workers, we can't have the earliest time. Because, obviously, to get it in the earliest time, we're likely to need more than the minimum number of workers. Okay. Now, I, for, for, to be able, okay. Now, what we would use for this is... Um, we now create something called a Gantt chart, which essentially is a chart which shows us what can be done when. Now, I don't think this is a particular nice graph, because to schedule it, we need to say, this is what worker one's gonna do, this is what worker two's gonna be doing, and it's just a graph which shows what's happening at each time period, okay? Assuming one worker can only be doing one thing at once, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is that's all I'm going to be doing on this graph. That's the critical path, and you could work out the total number, you could work out the minimum number of workers from that. And as I said, you might want to go back and have that as actually out, uh, answering the actual question, okay, once we've gone through the minimum number of workers um, and how to work it out. Obviously, I put the formula there, so it's total of all the activities in terms of the duration of the total duration, basically, addition of every single number that isn't in a square rectangular box on there, okay. And, um, I'm in brackets, obviously. But anyway, um, as I said, you could just have a go at that if you want to see when I've talked about scheduling. Now, I'm going to put a slightly different graph on the board uh, to help us answer the scheduling problem, um, purely because I think it's a bit more, uh, it's a bit helpful, a bit more helpful, in the right word, uh, for, for using this other graph that it's got in the book. Okay, so I'm just going to, Pause that, um, and then we're going to move on to the next little bit of uh, the controller. Okay, so thanks for watching. We'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so I've kind of expertly drawn um, this now. It is a new graph, okay, and I've very kindly filled out the late and early times um, of each activity, and I've even labelled the critical path for you. Um, okay, and I've told, I've put down the total duration of all the potential activities, so that's the total combined duration of duration uh, of activity A, activity B, E, F, C, D, and G. Okay, and all of them, uh, all combined durations come to uh, 6.5. Now the critical path of A, E, F, and G, and hopefully you can spot that, I don't need to go over that again, the combined duration of that is 4.5, okay? Um, and we need to know how many, what are the, what's the minimum uh, required number of workers to be able to perform this task. Now the key thing with this is just simply using this lower bound formula. And it's the minimum number of workers, not necessarily the quickest, okay? Uh, therefore it's likely to take longer than 4.5, okay? Maybe that's 4.5 hours, I, I don't really know. It's whatever the others are measured in. Okay, so as I said, let's just apply this formula. Okay, so it's essentially 6.5 over 4.5, which is obviously the total duration, 6.5, over the duration of the critical path, 4.5. That's quite a high percentage. Okay, and that comes to about 1.4. Now, you can't say, ah, we've got 1.4 workers. You can't just go to one of your employees and cut them in half and then cut off another bit of a limb and say that's 0.4 of a person, he can do an activity. Well, uh, in the current situation of England, that is, uh, of course, illegal and um, probably quite messy as well. But anyway, um, so whenever we get a decimal, we always round it up, even if it's below five, okay, we always round it up. If it's above a certain number, we, we look at the next number. Because, yes, we could do it with 1.4 people, but we can't have 0.4 of a person uh, without being um, arrested, okay? So you say, therefore, we need a, a minimum of two workers. And you can have more, okay? This is not telling us too much, you know, it's not saying it restricts each activity to one person, okay? We need at least two workers. Now, as I said, this is a very simple diagram, and hopefully you can kind of see why that is, because we've got two options coming off A, okay, and they don't split up into loads of different options, okay, if it did, okay, um, you could probably see why that is. But as I say, okay, this is what we call as a Gantt chart. 
Now, obviously, I've not drawn a little square graph there, uh, it's, but uh, because this isn't graph paper, uh, for those of you that are a bit more eagle-eyed, this is a whiteboard, uh, not a piece of graph paper, so I can't be bothered to draw a little square on, so I I'm pretty sure you're not. Uh, anyway, you'll be given um, one of them in the exam, you won't be expected to draw it, so you know you can thank your lucky stars for that. Okay, so the first, basically, this just shows each row is a worker, okay? Basically, we'll have a list of activities in each row. And each row will be performed by a certain worker. Now, there's a couple of assumptions that we make, okay, with um, this Gantt chart. And I think I'll just make sure I'm not... Um, okay, so we'll assume that no worker will remain idle if there's an activity they can be doing. So basically, um, we're not looking at your average Joe, uh, you know, a person who really is motivated and wants to do anything they can when they can. And they will only have a rest um, when they uh, have no activities to start. So if there's an activity to be started, okay, then they can will start that activity. Obviously, we can't go at double speed. You know, you can probably shoot someone in the foot and say, you better finish that or you lose your other foot. But maybe that's just um, why I'm not a manager or something. Anyway, okay, so the first thing that you need to be aware of, the first row of this um, Gantt chart will always be made up by the critical path. Now, I said the critical path is A, E, F, G. You can't typically write A, E, F, G in the table. Because this table, I'm probably not a little bit right, but um, it goes 0, 1.5, 1, 1 1.5, etc, etc. Now, obviously, you will be given what it goes up in in the, exam, in the exam, as I say. So, it will be applicable to whatever graph you're drawing. Okay? I will also say, as well, they will give you, um, as I said, square paper. So, you can be a lot more accurate than I'm going to be. But... That table is purely good enough to have in terms of 1s and, and 0.5s, okay? So we don't need to um, increase it at all. Now, as I said, the critical path always goes on the first row. Now, because there's no critical path, we don't have to draw a float. Um, yeah, I'll draw the critical path and now I'll go and say something else. Okay, so the first activity starts at 0 and ends at 1, okay? So the latest time, it, the earliest time it can finish is 1, and the latest time it's allowed to finish is 1, and it has a duration of 1. So we just simply draw a square block, okay, and we label it A. Now, if that A, uh, this is just hypothetical by the way, and it's totally not true, because if you look at the first number, that is 1, okay? That has, basically, that's the earliest time it can finish, is 1, okay? And it's got a duration of 1, okay? So we draw the thick line, okay, so the thick box, um, that's not written, not meant to represent the type of person, um, but we draw the thick box where the duration is, okay? So all over the duration, so when I say all over the duration, what I mean is the full thing. So we keep drawing that square, that solid line up until the duration, okay? How, how, how long it takes. But then, when these two numbers are different, okay, so when the um, when the late event time is bigger, okay, we because if you remember, cast our minds back to the very start of this uh, video, all, all that time ago, we said the difference between the early event, uh, sorry, the late event time and the early event time, something you know, known as the slack, is how long we can have a break for, and that is represented. Um, Let me make sure I get this right. Sorry. Yeah, so the latest time we can finish is... If, if the latest time it's finished is not the earliest time it can finish, we draw the dotted line. So say, for example, hypothetically, because say A, when it ended at, at event 1, the um, late event time, say that was 3, therefore you would draw a dotted line up till 3. Okay, we draw the dotted line up till three, something like that. And you say A does finish at one, so your duration is where it's a solid line, and you draw the dotted square line and say, well, we could extend A up to this point, and we could have a longer activity in that space. But obviously, as we don't, we don't draw a, a, a dotted line. But that's if the bottom number was bigger, okay, we would draw it to that. And the dotted line is what's called uh, the float. Okay. 
So hopefully that makes a bit of sense. But anyway, as I said, we'll get on with drawing this critical path. That was kind of what I wanted to show, but I wasn't sure if I should draw a block there first. Anyway, so we say A finishes at 1, and it's, its earliest potential time is finishing at 1, and its longest potential finishing time, or well, late time, is 1 also, so we don't draw any dotted lines. And because this is a critical path, we will never have a flow. Okay, so we always draw a, a continuous set of uh, blocked lines. This is for work of one run because it's the first row. E uh, last has a duration of two. It can start as early as one and finish as late as three, but it's got a, a duration of two, so the earliest time it can also finish as three. So therefore, we draw as the solid line up until three, and we label that block um, block E. Okay. All right. So we next we look at the next um, critical activity. Okay, which is F. That has a duration of one. It can start as early as three and finish as late as four. Okay, so therefore it, it can't finish any later than four and it can't uh, start any earlier than three. Okay, it's got a duration of one, so we draw the uh, solid line up until four. Okay, and we label that block F. Okay, uh, the last one, G, well, that has can only start as early as four. Finishes late as 4.5 and it's got a duration of 0.5. So therefore, it can't, we can't slack off. Uh, sorry, we can't have a rate, uh, we can't delay the start of the activity even. Um, so therefore, we draw a block solid line up until 4.5 and label that, um, no, uh, label that as G. Okay? And you might want to say um, that this row, okay, so you could put, put an arrow to it saying uh, that is what worker one will be doing. And obviously, worker one can't have a break or change activities. Okay, so that's ideally what worker one uh, would be doing. Okay, so what we need to do now, obviously we need to complete all the activities. This is what this scheduling idea is all about. Okay, so we need to uh, hypothesize different activities that could be done. Okay, so... Um, what we need to do, first of all, okay, as I said, this might be put, put into two graphs, uh, uh, two Gantt charts, by the way. The first Gantt chart might be saying, list all the potential activities um, that could be done on a Gantt chart. And this is what you do. Now, obviously, you draw in the critical path. That's that's the same for any Gantt chart. That like Gantt chart? Uh, Gantt chart, sorry. And what you would do, okay, is you would draw... Ah, well, um, we know... You would draw the remaining activities, okay, and... Obviously, we can't. We're not going to draw A again because remember the next row is going to be the next work. The next worker does. Okay, so we could say ah, the next work, the next available activity is activity B. But if we relate to this depending on thing, it depends on A being finished. So A must be finished for B to start. So therefore, as we can see, B can start as early as one and finish as late as two point five. However. B has only got a duration of 1, so the earliest time it can finish is 2. So we draw a, a solid line, um, we start on a new row, from um, 1 to 2. However, because B can finish as late as 2.5, we draw this dotted line up to 2.5. Something like that, okay? And we, then we look at the next activity, okay? The next activity is C. But as we can see, C has to start after B, okay? In other words, C depends on B, okay? And it's got, an act, it's got a duration of 0 0.5. And as we can see from these two boxes here, it can start as early as 2 and finish as late as 3. But the earliest time, because it's only got a duration of 0 0.5, <coughs> I do apologise. Because it, it's only got a duration of 0 0.5, the, the um, early stamp can start as 2, so therefore the early stamp finishes uh, at the early event time is 2.5, but it's allowed to finish as late as 3. Okay, so therefore we start it at 2, okay, but we start in a new row, okay, and we draw the solid line up until 2.5, okay, because we know that's how long C takes. Okay, but because it can finish as late as three, we draw this dotted line up till three. These dotted lines are what is known as uh, the float. Okay, so that's activity C. Now, this is just simply drawing out 
what potential activities can be done when. In, in other words, we're taking this graph and we're putting it in terms of a, a time format. So this is more likely something you would do in the real world. Okay? As opposed to this crap. Anyway, okay, so we look at the next available activity. And the next available activity is activity D, okay? Now, this dummy here is not an activity, remember, so we don't label it as an activity. The only reason that dummy's there, that dotted line, the only reason that dummy's there is to enable this graph to function, okay? That's good work. Um, but anyway, it's not an activity, so we wouldn't label it as anything. And even if we did, remember an activity, a dummy has got an activity, a duration of zero, okay? So we'd just be drawing nothing, not even a single line on there. Anyway, okay, so we say the dummy doesn't have a duration. But anyway, let's look at activity D, okay? Because that must finish after activity C has finished. So therefore the earliest time D can start is the, uh, uh, is the earliest time C can finish, okay? So it must, it can start as early as 2.5, so we draw the solid line on 2.5 on the new row up to, well it, it's, it's, only, it's only got a duration of 0.5 so if it starts as early as 2.5 it can finish therefore as early as 2.5 plus 0.5 which is 3 okay but we know from here it can finish as late as 4 okay so therefore we draw the line solid line from D to uh, from Sorry, from 2.5 to 3, okay? Because we know that's how long D takes. Okay, but D basically can finish as late as 4, okay? So we draw this whole float for D all the way from 3 to 4. Okay, so D must start as early as 2.5, but it can finish as late as 4. Okay, now this is where we relate this idea to the minimum number of workers that can um, complete this activity is two. Okay, now we said one of them must be devoted to the critical path. We can't change them from that because critical path will be the length of the um, duration of this, whatever it is. Okay, now they may be able to do events after that, but that, they're for more complicated graphs. This is quite a simple one. Okay, so we look at these dotted lines and say, can we fit these activities into these dotted lines? Now, remember, we can't move these um, in terms of, we can't move them left or right, okay? We can't move C to start at zero, because if you look at C, it can only start at zero, at least two. So, really, we can only move these, these solid um, lines, okay, these solid squares and rectangles, up and down. We can't move them left and right, okay? Otherwise, we'd be affecting the start time and the end time. Okay, and what we want to do is fit these all into one. Okay, so what you would do is it, on a new grid down chart, okay, they would divide one underneath. You would basically, if you were saying, ah, well, this must be done with two workers, what's the minimum time to finish it? You would move C up to this space in B because C has got a duration of 0 0.5 and B has got a float of 0 0.5 because it can finish as early as 2 uh, and it's allowed to finish as late as 2.5. Well, that's got a float that can have a break of 0.5, but obviously the worker wants to work. And the next activity that will be done is C. That's got a duration of 0.5. And because B has got a float of 0.5, we can, we can make the worker, who would have been having a 0.5 break, after doing B, and say, you're going to do C next. And he's going to cry about it, and we're going to kick him in. He's going to do his work. Okay, so basically what you would do is move C up into this uh, kind of shaded little area there. Okay. And because C can, because D must be done after C, okay, because it's it's got an arrow after it, so it's the following event, okay. Um, but D can finish as late as um, four, okay. So actually, I was making making it up. You can't really move them left and right. You can move them left and right as long as the float fits in it. Now, really, that only looks like you can move them right. Essentially, you can move C right all the way up until the end of C, which is the end of this uh, dotted line. In other words, as long as C is finished by 3, okay, it doesn't matter how far to the right you move it, as long as it finishes at 3, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. And as I said, they, they would just move up D. So if you would put C there, then you could start D at 2.5, but you've got to remember you can't move it left, really. You can only move it right up until the end of this dotted line float business, okay? 
Alright, so if you were to do that, you might end up with, um, say this was worker 2 now, okay, so you would have B, C, and then D, okay, so that would be worker 2, and then you would work out all the floats and put them on the end, okay. So, obviously, we're not going to use up any, we're going to use up all the float of B, so now we've not got a float for B, because that's been, that activity, all that float's been taken up by activity C. Activity C, well, that now ends at 2.5, okay, um, and that's as early as D can start, okay, so therefore we start D at 2.5, and D therefore would finish at 3, and the earliest time, and the latest time it can finish is 4, so we would have a float of, fo of 1 here, because obviously it finishes at 3 and it can, could finish at 4, okay, so therefore it's got a difference of 1, so that's the end float, okay. Now that one's a very, very basic um, example. As I'm trying to get through the D1 syllabus as kind of quickly as I can come up to the exams, I'm going to leave it there for this kind of example because I think doing an easier example, especially on this, kind of sets you up for doing the harder examples uh, because it's a lot easier to show an easier example. Well, that, that is the re part of the reason. But when I, when, when I start to put on more complicated examples, it's always easier to build up from the easiest stuff, as well as it's me, easier to first teach the, <coughs> well, I'm dying, but you get the idea. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> I've got to do a bit of dying. <coughs> okay, so, anyway, I'm dead. Uh, so this is all my joy, so I couldn't say anything at all. Anyway, so thanks for watching, and hopefully, uh, one more thing, you can see why, so we, why this formula works, because we could say we could do it to two workers, and quite clearly we can. Now, that just happens to be less than the critical path. You may have to rearrange them, okay? So it's, you, you might get that the duration now is extended from the original length of the critical path, okay? But as I said, you know, it's not necessarily going to be that. Okay, so don't, what I'm saying here is don't worry if your second worker now takes longer, okay, than the original worker did completing the critical path. You can, once worker one has completed the critical path, they are now open to do any activity that is uh, that they can do after finishing all of the activities of the on the critical path. Okay, so th thanks for watching. I think that's it. I'm not going to waste any more of your time. I think you've already died enough. It's getting on for the longest video I've ever done. So if you watched it all to the end, I, I honestly um, don't know why you've done that because we've all got uh, a life. Um, I don't, but you might. Okay, so anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Yeah, as long as you survive that, as well.